Are we in frame? I think we're doing good. Video number two. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm finally gonna bring you the summer reading wrap up that you all have been dying for. Uh, that is not correct. Okay, just kidding. No one's been waiting for this, but I've been waiting for this. Um, I wanted to wait to get all the books I had in physical copies so I wouldn't have to show you like pictures, but I guess it really doesn't freaking matter because I read the book. So I don't need to get physical copies of it. I've had a good reading summer. Pretty much don't hate any of these books and I like a lot of them. I'm going to be explaining to you all the books I read this summer, giving you short little summaries, no spoilers. But yeah, if you like these kind of videos, just let me know, subscribe. Let's get into it quickly. I'm gonna try to keep these explanations short because I talk way too damn much. And most of these books, I'm sure a lot of you have read. So why do I need to sit here and explain them to you when you probably already know them? I read five books in July. And the first book I read is November 9 by Colleen Hoover. I have an actual copy of this book, but I gave it to my friend Alana. So Alana, give me my book back. Okay, just kidding. I read this book about like the first day of July, I believe. I had read a few chapters. I just decided one night I was just gonna read it all. Tell me why I started reading it from 11 o'clock and I didn't finish until like 6 a.m. I stayed up and read that whole entire book. Basically in one night, my life has never been the same ever since I read that book. So this book is about two different characters, one girl named Fallon, a guy named Ben, and they both meet on November 9th. And November 9th, as you'll understand if you read the book, is a very significant day for both of them. And they immediately hit it off. It's insta-love. If you read the book, you can see that insta-love is like ironic in the book because Fallon hates insta-love in books, but like her whole love story with Ben is insta-love. Um, so they hit it off really quickly and they realize they can't be in a relationship and they can't fall in love right now because they're both 18, they're both too young. He's moving to California, she's moving to New York and it's just not the right time. So they decide that for the next five years, until they turn 23, that they will meet on November 9th in an agreed location and they won't talk in between. So the book is literally in five to six sections every single November 9th. This book, it's a great premise, but it gets so much crazier than you could even imagine. Of course, Colleen Hoover pulls out the twist in the end. I read Ugly Love by Colleen Hoover and that's the only ones I've read from her. And I liked Ugly Love, but I wasn't like obsessed with it. Like it was definitely like a three out of five star book for me, like it was fine. But November 9 was a five out of five for me. I'm obsessed with that book. Like it totally ruined my life in the best way possible. Ben is one of my favorite book boyfriends I've ever read. Read that damn book. So the next book I read is Marriage for One by Ella Mays. This one started my slow burn obsession I've had this summer. And it's about two characters, one named Rose and the other is Jack. Um, yes, that is on purpose. There's like little Titanic references throughout the book. It starts off with Rose losing her chance to have the dream coffee shop she's ever wanted. Her ex fiance just dumped her. And in order for her to obtain a coffee shop, he would have had to marry her so they could obtain this building and she's in distraught, but here comes Jack. He is a lawyer of her ex-fiance's family, and he decides that he suddenly wants this building. So in order for him to get the building, he asks Rose to marry him so he can inherit the building for his own business adventures, and then she can get the building so she can make her own coffee shop. And of course, Jack is a stern, mean, standoffish man. It's very much grumpy sunshine. Rose is very uplifting very joyful and the book is really cute. I would give it definitely like a four out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. Love Jack and Rose. Okay, so the next book I read was Walla Winnipeg by Marnie Zapata. And I know I've spoken about Marnie Zapata a little bit in my last book video, but y'all do not understand. Hold up. Silence for this holy trinity. I got into Marnie Zapata this summer and I'm really obsessed with her books. They are slow burn though. Like nothing happens with the characters until like sometimes halfway in between the book. But it, the book for me is so intriguing and we explore the other characters and the other relationships within the book. And once they get together, it literally ends perfect. Like sometimes I hate when books 
they get together so quick in romance books sometimes and then we have to read everything after that like literally after a while i don't care like i care about the lead up like for instance in the office when pam and jim get together honestly they're like cute for like one season and then i literally don't care anymore like all the way up to that the whole drama is honestly the best part of pam and jim's romance in my opinion this is a sports romance novel it has two characters and the girl character is named vanessa she is the assistant of aiden graves who is the football player he's been his assistant for like three years and he's very standoffish very mean very particular on how he wants everything and she's really good at her job and really good at helping him but she gets no thanks from him and she's sick of working for him and she has her own business adventure she wants to go on to so she decides to quit at first it seems like he doesn't really give a shit he doesn't really care but then he comes running back being like first of all I need you to come work for me again because nobody's going to be able to do it like you. And two, I need you to marry me. And she's like, what the hell? Like, what? What do you mean? He wants her to marry him because he is a Canadian. In order to continue playing, he needs to get married and he needs a visa. So somehow, after a lot of convincing, he convinces her to marry him. This book is just so long but it has so many good moments in here. You can literally, when you're reading her books, you're not just like assuming, like the author's not just telling you that they become best friends and they become the, each other's lifeline. It, you can literally see it. This is a really good sports romance book. Um, doesn't have a lot of football in it, but has a lot of like football instances. So it's like perfect if you don't actually give a shit about the sport. Okay, next, right after I read Colty by Marta Zapata. Similar kind of vibe. Um, Colty is a very, very famous soccer player and he becomes the coach of this women's team and one of the girls on the women's team her name is sal and she's been in love with colty since she was a little girl like this is age gap like she was seven years old like watching him on tv playing and he was like 21 at that time so there's a very significant age gap but when this book takes place she's like 27 he's like 40 something and basically she's playing professional soccer and he becomes her coach. And at first she's very excited, you know, first she's very like, oh my God, this is like my celebrity crush. This is what got me into playing soccer in the first place. Then you realize he's a big asshole. He's an asshole, he's a drunken asshole. And he has, doesn't have his life together right now. They kind of bump heads, they kind of immediately have like animosity towards each other, but shit hits a fan when he's mean to her dad, because her dad is like a super fan of Colty and he's mean to him and she like goes off on him and that's kind of where the romance kind of star felt like they were truly just like besties like if you couldn't think of a better besties couple it's sal and colty then i finished the off-campus series by reading the legacy i don't know if i've said this before i read the legacy it's basically after the four off-campus books this is kind of like their epilogue book was this needed no did i like it yeah because I liked the couples and I wanted to see more of them, of course. But I just like felt like this wasn't necessary. I didn't care that they were like having many arguments. I felt like if we were gonna have an argument, I wish it was in the original book and we could have flushed that all out for more conflict. It was just like, if I'm gonna read an epilogue book, like clearly I just, I just wanted to see them being happy. Like, but I did enjoy it. If you read all of Off Campus and you're like, should I read Legacy? You don't have to don't have to you don't I don't feel like you need to read it so that's the end of all the books I read in July so let's move on to August so August I started off strong I started off with normal people by Sally Rooney this book is very popular a lot of people have read this I feel like it's a very polarizing book which totally makes sense but I feel like because of the way it's written and what the story is it makes sense why it's polarizing and that's what makes it so good so this book is between um connell and marianne it explains a five years i think or so of their relationship and basically the ups and downs of a relationship and how miscommunication can totally get in the way of something that's a real connection and how love isn't always enough but it's also just the exploration of these two characters like separately like there's a lot of criticism obviously because this book very frustrating to read <laughs> like the miscommunication is almost comical like when i read it i was like actually laughing at times when i 
probably shouldn't, but it was just so absurd how much they don't communicate and how much they communicate about everything else except about the important things. This was very sad. I cried, I laughed. If you're gonna read any of these books in this video, truly read this book. Another thing, I literally had to look up if I had gotten the wrong copy because when I saw there was no quotation marks, it took me a long time to read this book because one, this book has no quotation marks obviously. So it forces you to read everything. Cause I feel like when you're reading your eye just goes immediately to the qu quotation marks. But in this book, there's literally none. It's just like paragraphs. You have to read everything because the author like wants you to like see like the actual, like read everything and not miss anything. And like actually read what the, read what the characters are thinking rather than what they're saying, because usually what they're saying doesn't even make any sense anyways. So anyways, that was really frustrating in the beginning, but once you get past the first chapter, you're good. But every time I would pick up the book again to start reading, I would literally have to retrain myself to not just skip to the quotation marks because there is none. So next I read is Beach Read. This is when I went to Vegas. This book is a five out of five stars for me. Honestly, when I read it, I thought I wasn't gonna, I knew I was gonna like it, but I didn't think I was gonna love it as much as I do. Like, I cried. Maybe I just have some problems. This book is about a girl named January. January is a typical romance writer. Like, writes about all the positivities of romance. Her books always end happy. And she gets that from her family. He looks to her mom and dad for romance and looks to them as role models in her life. But unfortunately, her dad passes away and it's revealed that he's cheating on her mom for the last 10 years. It kind of ruined her whole perception of her parents' relationship and knowing that he has a secret house with a secret mistress and she has to deal with all the affairs with the house is kind of ruined her whole perception of romance and she's kind of having a crisis about it. So she goes to this beach house. Next door is this guy named Augustus. So Augustus, he is basically the opposite of a romance writer. He is a fiction writer, but he writes more true stories. And true stories can also mean more depressing stories, things that don't have happy endings. And that's what he tends to write. And they kind of bump heads about their different writing styles and they kind of assume different things about each other based on what they write. They're also rivals. They were rivals in college. So they have prior knowledge of each other. They've also hooked up before. Both of them are in a writing rut and they both need money. So they decide to switch um, literary genres and they decide to write each other's style. And I don't know, I, when I read that premise, I was like, mm, am I gonna really like this? Like, is it gonna be boring? Even though I love books about people writing books, my favorite part about the book is that the author led us into what they were writing. So I was reading a book within a book. Like, I wish those books that were in this book were actual real books. So the next book I read is Marnie Zapata's All Roads Lead Here masterpiece. I'm obsessed with this book. This is the third Marina Zapata book I read. This book is about Aurora and she ends up going back to her hometown where her mother and her used to live. Her mother actually went missing in the mountains. So that's kind of like a mystery part of the book. She wants to start over um, and she rents out this apartment from this guy. And when she gets there, she realizes that it's not just a guy, it's a boy and this boy's son um, doesn't want to rent out this apartment. So she gets there and he's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I'm renting out this place. And he's like, uh, no, you're not. I told my son that we're not renting this out. She gets to an agreement with this guy. She stays there. His name is Mr. Rhodes. And Mr. Rhodes, this is also very much age gap. I think she's like 30 something and he's like 40 something. Um, but he's like a cute old dad, very hot. I love the dynamic between the three of them. It takes place in Colorado. So she goes on hiking trips where her mother used to go. And we have Mr. Rhodes, who is a policeman, but he's not a policeman. He's like an environmental policeman. So he like goes into the mountains and makes sure hikers are okay. Rhodes and Aurora just, they connect so beautifully. The next book I read is My Killer Vacation by Tessa Bailey. This is Tessa Bailey's new release this year. It's a little bit messed up because I also took this with me to Vegas. And I am obsessed with Tessa Bailey. But you don't take these books seriously and you know that's what they're for. They're here to bring the rom-com, the steaminess, very steamy. And they're here to bring 
a cute trope. This takes place in Cape Cod. So this is about Taylor and her little brother. They both go to Cape Cod on vacation. They rent out a house. They find a dead body. Yes, this is a murder mystery rom-com book. Like when I saw that, I was like obsessed. Like I have to have it. Taylor is just like, you know, a preschool teacher. She is a rule follower, but she decides on this vacation, she's not following any rules. She wants to insert herself in the investigation. So while inserting herself in the investigation, the murder victim's sister calls in Miles, this bounty hunter who is a private investigator, and he's hired to help assist with the crime. So he comes in and finds Taylor and they just immediately have a connection. It's so cute. But it's between them two, their romance. He's just trying to protect her and try to keep her out of trouble. And she just can't help herself. This is a good four out of five book for me. I'd recommend if you're in a book slump, read Tessa Bailey because she'll always bring you back in. This is the last book I read. This is The Chase by Elle Kennedy. This is Dean's little sister and Dean's little sister just recently gets kicked out of her last college and she decides to come to Briar U to start fresh and she needs roommates. So she decides to live with three other hockey players, including this one guy named Fitzy. So Fitzy and Summer, that's her name. Fitzy clearly knows that Summer has a crush on him. He's not sure if he likes her or not because he's not sure what kind of girl she is. He like perceives her as like this bubbly sorority girl and he's not into that and whatever. And he kind of talks about it with um, one of his teammates, but Summer overhears him at a party and she's like, well, fuck you, like whatever. And it kind of starts this like miscommunication game between them two. Honestly, I didn't love this one. Uh, I'm gonna give it like a two out of five stars. I didn't feel like this was as good as The Risk, to be honest, um, which is I've already read that book months and months and months before I started off campus. I liked Summer, but I didn't really like Fitzy. I thought he was like douchey and weird. I didn't really like him. And that's all the books I read in July and August. And that's my summer reading wrap up. Um, if I had to, again, say one book taking from this video, read Normal People. I feel like if you're a reader, you have to read this book. Like it is a rite of passage. I don't care how you feel about it at the end. You just have to read it. You have to know what happens at the end please like and subscribe and let me know if you want more book videos. I'm gonna feel my September wrap up because I am one month behind on this summer wrap up. Love you all and have a good rest of your day. Bye vibes.